us a really funny recap about that story. But before we get there, we just wanted to introduce ourselves a little bit. Yeah. Um, like Nathan said, my name is Tyler. Um, I am the uh, youth and young adult intern at Nathan, I think, yeah, great. Um, which essentially means that I just get to hang out with Chandra and Lizzie all the time. Um, it's a blast. Um, I am also a student. Um, I attend a school called the Coalition for Youth Ministry Excellence. It's a long title. Essentially, it just means that I'm learning about youth ministry and all the things that go into it. It's super fun. Um, a little bit about me so that you can get to know me, um, because I'm sure most of you don't know me whatsoever. Um, Something that I do, a part of my daily routine all the time, um, there's a couple things. Um, <laughs> the first thing that I do um, every night before I go to bed is I like to read at least one chapter of whatever book I'm reading at the time. Um, and then I like to spend about 10, 15 minutes in prayer with God, just talking about my day, um, the days to come, what that looks like, anything that I need prayer for, or um, any people that I feel like I need to pray for. And the other thing that I like to do, um, this isn't a part of my daily routine. I do this at least once a week. Um, I tell a joke about penguins. Um, if you've never heard this it This is before, my favorite joke ever, just so you know. I, yes, 100%. Lizzie loves this joke. I tell it all the time. Um, so it goes something like this. So two penguins are paddling in the desert. And one turns to the other and he says, where's your oar? And the second one says, sure does. If none of you got that, that's totally okay. You it's can come fine. and talk to me afterwards. It's not I'm not sure anybody yeah. gets that joke. I'm no. not going to lie. <laughs> no, it's definitely not a funny joke, but... It's a dad it's, joke. Yeah. It's good. It's funny to me, so that's all that matters. Yeah. So. Awesome. Yeah, and so my name is Lizzie Rowan. I serve at the Atridge location as the junior high director slash administrative extraordinaire. Thank you, Nathan, for that one. Um, I am also a student at Steinbeck Bible College, which is in Manitoba, but we don't talk about that. We, I do it from here, so we're just going to say I'm a student here. Um, and I'm graduating this spring, and I'm really excited to be able to put all the knowledge that I've learned over the last few years into practice every single week with the junior highs, which Levi is back there. He's one of my best friends at junior high, and I'm super pumped that he's here this morning with his family as well, because, you know, they kind of just run this place, so he's always here. Um, and it's part of my daily routine is every night before, well, while I'm getting ready for bed, is I like to have a 10-minute dance party, because I'm really bad at going to sleep, and I need to, like, get all my wiggles out. I need to, like, <laughs> expel all my energy before I can go to bed, so I just have a little 10-minute dance party. I'm not going to lie, it doesn't work super well, but it is fun, so we're... <laughs> We're just going to keep doing that, probably for the rest of time. Um, so yeah, we're just going to jump into our story. So, so far in this series, we've seen the Israelites see God move in big, big ways. We saw him protect them through the Passover. We saw him part the Red Sea. And we see God as this big warrior. But we also need to see God as our daily God who provides for us every single day. So that's what we're going to be talking about today as we talk about the story of the Israelites wandering through the desert, which Tyler is going to tell us right now. Yeah, so um, Nathan read part of Exodus, but there's a little bit more, and I just want to kind of sum up um, parts of what he said. Essentially, what Exodus 16 is about um, is God showing up in a new way for the Israelites. Um, they've seen him, like Lizzie said, um, show up in really big ways. He parted the Red Sea. He brought um, plagues down on Egypt. But every time that he did that, he kind of was like, okay, I'm going to part the Red Sea, and then I'm going to back off a little bit, and you guys can figure this out on your own a little bit. But now what is happening is they're wandering through the desert. And I don't know if you've ever been in a desert before, but there's not a lot of food or water anywhere. And it wears your oar. It does wear your oar. Um, but Sorry, penguin joke. Yeah. So the Israelites are wandering through the desert, and now it's not so much of we need God to come and save us from oppression or um, bring us out of Egypt. It's we need food. We need water. And so they ask Moses what he's going to do about it. And Moses asked God, he goes, God, how am I supposed to help these people? And so God tells him, he's like, this is what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to bring you bread, and I'm going to bring you meat at night. And God does this. But God says, make sure that the people don't 
keep that bread. Because the whole point of this is that they come to me day after day for this. And obviously, when Moses tells the people, this is what you need to do, some of them don't exactly listen to him. They keep the bread, and it goes bad. And the people are upset because they're like, this bread that God gave us is bad. And Moses is upset because they're not listening to exactly what he told them to do. And so again, Moses goes and he talks to God. God says, all right, hopefully after a couple days they will learn to listen and they will come daily for this bread. But I'm going to throw a curveball at them. And you know how before I said you need to come daily? Well, on the sixth day, they need to come and get as much as they need for two days because the seventh is a day of rest and so there will be no bread because they're going to have all they need and they can just relax. Um, I don't know if you know a whole lot about the Israelite people, but they like to work from sunup to sundown and at this point work was just kind of following God, walking through the wilderness. So they were walking sunup to sundown. That's a lot of walking and to do that six days straight is a lot. So if I'm the Israelite people, I need a full day of rest. But again, Moses says to the people, gather twice as much for this day because there won't be any bread tomorrow. So the people gather twice as much, except for some, and I, I'm just assuming that it's probably those same people who didn't listen before who are not listening now, and they only gather enough for one day. And the seventh day comes and they go out to gather bread and it's not there. And they go to Moses and they're like, Moses, where's the bread? What are we supposed to eat? And Moses looks at them kind of funny. He's like, hey, remember yesterday when we talked about this? This is exactly what I was talking about. Moses has a very short temper. And so he's very upset about this. And he goes to God again and he tells him what happened. And God says this, and I really want you to hear this. God says... When are they going to learn to trust me? Yeah, so how do the Israelites trust in God as their everyday God instead of just the God of the battles in big ways? God is our God every single day, even in the midst of life-changing events, but also every single day. So we have two questions that we're going to explore today. And the first one is how do we respond when God shows up in a way that we're not expecting? Yeah. Um, so something that I find really helpful when I read this story is that um, in Hebrew, that's, it's, it's a whole thing. In Hebrew, the word for faith, trust, and belief, it's all the same. So when I read this story, I have to, um, I have to wonder, I know for a fact that the Israelites believe in God. They know that he's real because they've seen him do big things for them. They've seen him work for them. So they believe that he's real. But I wonder in this story if the issue is that don't trust that God can provide in the same way in their day-to-day -day lives that he does in the big lives. That's all right. No, it's good. Um... They've seen God do big, big things for them. But he always takes a step back afterwards and lets them kind of figure it out for themselves. But now, they need God every single day. And they need to keep going back to him every single day for what they need. Now, um, like Chandra, I work at a camp during the summer um, called Camp Kadish. It's the same one that she works at. And... Uh, Something that we see often in kids when they come is something we like to call the camp high. They come to camp and they are so immersed in this bubble of Jesus and the things that he can do for them. They're surrounded by nature and they can see God. Um, but when, they, when, it when it comes time to go home, the issue is that they're going back to regular life. And they're super excited about Jesus, and they want to tell all of their friends and their family about Jesus. They want to read their Bible every day. But when they get back to regular life, regular life sets in. And their old habits start to come back. And soon, 
reading the Bible every day becomes reading the Bible every other day, once a week, once a month, and then never. And this cycle happens again when they go to camp the next summer. I see this in the Israelites a lot. Um, They've seen God work in big ways, and they saw God part the Red Sea, and afterwards they sang worship to God. They were so on fire for Jesus, for God. But then when it comes time to wandering in the desert and trying to follow God every day, they're like, is this, do we, is this the same God that we're supposed to be following right now? The same God that does these big thing f- things for us. Is that the same God that is going to provide daily for us? You know, the same way that God shows up in an unexpected way for the Israelites here, Jesus shows up in an unexpected ways uh, for the people of his day. Now, at that time, they knew about the Messiah in theory. They had heard stories about how he was going to come. And what they expected was a big, strong warrior who was going to do things like um, parting of seas and bringing them out of oppression. Specifically, at that time, it was Roman occupation. But Jesus came, and he had a very different message. It wasn't one of conquering your enemies. It was one of loving your enemies, loving them and treating them the same way that you want to be treated. If we look at the Bible, we see that God always shows up in unexpected ways. I feel like God's a little cheeky, and he's like, oh, you think you know me? I'm going to show up completely different and just throw a little curveball at you. But the same way that God shows up in unexpected ways in the Bible, we see him show up in unexpected ways now. Yeah, God definitely threw me a curveball when he just decided that he was just going to change my entire life path. That was a really fun time. So after high school, I really loved math and science in high school, and I decided naturally I should go into engineering because that makes a lot of sense when you like math and science. You should go into math and science things. Um, And let me tell you, when I say that I hated engineering, that would be the biggest understatement ever. It was not for me. It was not my place. I did not like anything about it. It was just... It was just not what I was expecting at all. And, but me, being the planner that I am, that was just, that I decided that that's what I was going to do. I was just going to keep going, even though I was, like, failing classes. Don't tell people. And I just, I just knew that I was like, I don't know what it is that I'm supposed to do, but I, don't, I just need a break. we got to do something. And after I had failed a class, I was, like, crying in my room, and my mom and my dad come, come in, and they're like, okay, what's going on? What do you need? What can we do for you? And I was like, I need to go to Bible school in Australia. And they're like, wait, what? It's not what we expected you to say, but okay, if that's what you feel like you need. So I ended up going to Australia to a program called Capernary, which is a Bible school program, like a short-term Bible school program there. And it was on this program that a lot of things changed for me. I saw God just start to like chip away at this ice block that I just decided that my life was going to be. And um, he did that in a way of a lot of things that I really didn't like. So just like I don't like engineering, I also really don't like the outdoors. I'm not an outdoorsy person. Camping, hiking, not good. Not good for me. And so naturally, we had to go on a five-day hiking and camping trip on this Cape and Ray. And it was, I'm just going to be dramatic and say it was probably the worst five days of my life because that's who I am. So there you go. Get a little tidbit into my life. Um, But it was in this thing called Adventure Weekend. It was an adventure. We had hiked for six hours up this mountain, and we were supposed to do this, like, little time with God where um, one of our leaders just said, okay, I want you to go and pray and say, what do you need to surrender to God? What is God calling you to change? And it was in this time where I really felt God just calling me to give up engineering. He's like, I don't think that that's where you're supposed to be. I think you need to do something else. And I was like, well, this is, the, well, this is what I chose, so we're just going to, thanks, God. Thanks for the tip, but no, it's okay. But when, it's, when I got back, oh, we also didn't get our cell phones on this weekend. That was a big thing for me. We didn't get our cell phones that time. So when I got back to the school, I had a text from Chandra. Here's another little hot tip. Um, me and Tyler's life, just, we just get, Chandra just tells us what to do when we do it. So 
Um, so that was the thing. So I got back to the school, and I had a text from Chandra, and she, she said that there was a job opening at Forest Grove Church for the family ministries administrative role, and I applied for it. I'm still working at that church five years later, so thank you, Chandra, for that one. And so God said, I know what I need you to do, and I'm going to put you on this path. And boy, was I not expecting that, but I'm still not expecting what's going to happen. I have no idea what's going to happen next week or five years from now, but I know that God is going to continue to show up for me. So even though he shows up in unexpected ways, it is expected that he will show up for us. Yeah. Um, God chooses to show up in unexpected ways all the time. I'm sure that um, some of you, most of you have a story um, similar to Lizzie's. Maybe it was something where God showed up in a bigger way than he did for Lizzie. Um, or maybe it was something smaller, something more day-to-day. But either way, when we're thinking about God showing up in unexpected ways, we need to ask ourselves another question. How do we change our mindset and our actions to rely on God daily? Yeah, so we know that God is going to work in unexpected ways all the time. Um, And sometimes that can cause us to be really uncertain about how he will move or how he will show up. And we see this in the Israelites' story, in their journey through the wilderness. We see this in the way that Jesus showed up. We saw this in the way that the early church was established. And we still are seeing this today as the church is still being transformed. And it is through the uncertainty that God will show up for us. We just need to trust him to do that. And he does. He does do that every single day. And sometimes God will lead us into places or times or circumstances that we don't expect, just like he led the Israelites into the desert of sin. And we see this in Exodus 16, that it was the perfect place for God to test his people and to shape their character every single day. And when we read this story, we see that God led the Israelites into something that they really didn't expect. And we might ask because of this, what is God leading me into? How is this shaping my character? How is God asking me to rely on him every single day? Yeah. um, For me, this happened, uh, well, this journey started um, after I graduated high school. And I had a very different plan for my life than what I do now. Um, At that time, I was like, my my main plan, um, I want to be a pilot. And if that doesn't work out, I'm going to do something else. But... I told myself, if I do anything else, it's not going to be one of two things. It's not going to be in a faith setting, and it's not going to be working with kids. I do both of those things now. Uh, (laughs) But because of that, because I always told myself I wasn't going to do those two things, uh, it means that now, whenever I'm doing things like this, speaking in front of people in a faith setting or working with kids, I find that I always feel so unprepared. I feel like I don't deserve to be in this place and share with you all what it looks like to follow Jesus when I struggle with that most days. But one of the things that I realized very quickly in this journey is that if I was going to be in this space and I was going to be in settings like this where I'm sharing with other people what it looks like to follow Jesus, then I needed to go to God and I needed to rely on him to give me the words and show me what I'm supposed to do and tell me what I'm supposed to say because I for sure could not do this on my own. And so this journey has really caused me to rely on God all the time because I know that I would just trip over my words all the time, wouldn't know what to say. And I know that I do that all the time anyway, but I feel like it's a little bit easier knowing that God has my back and is going to help me through that. Yeah, so throughout the unexpected ways that God works, we can trust him because of his faithfulness. We know that God wants to show up for us and provide for us when we put our own trust and faith in him. And one example of this is when Jesus taught us how to pray the Lord's Prayer that we read earlier. Jesus knew that we needed to be prompted daily to rely on him. And so he taught us to pray this line, give us today our daily bread. So what is this daily bread that Jesus says that we need? 
When we read the gospel accounts of Jesus' life and ministry, we learn that the, the daily bread that he calls us to have is actually a relationship with him. And we also see this in the, in the example in John 6, which is one of the gospel books. And Jesus tells us that he is this bread of life. And funny, funny story, um, in, this, in these verses, they actually use the story of Exodus 16. Um, and the Israelite or the Jews are saying, we want you to show us a sign, Jesus. We want you to prove you are who you say you are. So in verses um, John 6, 30 to 35, it says this. They answered, show us a miraculous sign if you want us to believe in you. What can you do? After all, our ancestors ate manna while they journeyed through the wilderness. The scriptures say, Moses gave us bread from heaven to eat. And Jesus said, I tell you the truth. Moses didn't give you bread from heaven. My father did. And now he offers you the true bread from heaven. The true bread of God is the one who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, give us that bread every day. And Jesus replied, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry again. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. So it's funny that in this passage, the people are talking to Jesus and asking him for a sign, just like Moses gave the Israelites. And Jesus just said, I'm right here. I'm right here to have a relationship with you. I am the bread of life, and God gave me to you. So where does our faithfulness come in to play here? It needs to be our own willingness to come to God day after day, just like the Israelites gathered manna day after day, other than the Sabbath. You're supposed to get enough for that day. But by giving them the bread that they needed to collect every single day, he was prompting them to always come to him in faithfulness and that he would always provide. And when I look at this passage, I see God giving us permission to take what we need for that day. And that can look different for every single one of, that, one of us. Maybe that means you really, really, really need a cheeseburger that day. Go get that cheeseburger, unless you're vegan or vegetarian, don't do that. But maybe that means that you just need to take extra rest and not need to apologize for that. Maybe that means you just need to spend time with life-giving people instead of putting in extra work for all the workaholics out there. I am one of them. I will identify that way. When we rely on God daily to provide for our needs, that faithfulness that he's calling us to have will shine through. But in this story, I also see a warning. What is our mindset when we come to God? Is it relational? Are we coming to God because he's our father and friend and provider? Or are we just using God to give us what we need with no regard for relationship with him? We can become like the grumbling Israelites very, very quickly when our minds are not in the right space. We can complain about being starving in the wilderness just like the Israelites were and not want to put in any work to change that. Or we can be faithful followers of Jesus just like he calls us to be. And we can rely on God's faithfulness to provide for us. Um, so if we lost you at any point in there, I want to sum this up for you. So if you weren't paying attention that whole time, that's okay. Just pay attention to this last bit. The essence of this story is the Israelites trying to come to terms with God showing up in a new and different way for them. They might have been asking themselves the question, what if God doesn't provide tomorrow? What if... He brought down the bread from heaven today, and that's it. But this mentality shows a lack of trust in their God, the God who wants to come and provide for them daily. He said so himself. He said, this bread is going to be here for you every day. You just need to come and get it. Wandering through the desert like they were, it can be hard to trust in the unknown. Because that whole time, all they were doing was following where God was leading them. They had no idea where they were going. It can be really hard to trust in the unknown. But the truth is, we're not trusting in the unknown. We're trusting that God is providing for us in the unknown. And that can look different. You could actually be wandering through the desert. I don't know. It might be more of a metaphorical desert. Yeah, we don't have those here. No. We don't, not in Saskatchewan. Um, so it might be more of a metaphorical desert that you're wandering through. It might be just the realities that today and tomorrow is unknown. 
but God will provide for us through that unknown. Yeah, so we asked two questions, and these are two questions that we want to leave you with today or as you go into your week that you can ask. The first one is how do you respond when God shows up in a way that you are not expecting? How do you respond when God shows up in a way you're not expecting? And the second question is how do you change your mindset and your actions to rely on God daily? So thank you so much for letting us be a part of your congregation today. We had such a fun time um, sharing the word with you, and we would love to chat with you after. And Nathan, you're allowed to invite us back if you want to.